Happy to have with us here at ASH 2011, Dr. Ali Tahar. He is Professor of Medicine, Hematology, and Oncology at the American University of Beirut Medical Center. Thank you, sir, for stopping by. Thank you. You're here to talk about uh, NTDT, and let's start with an overview of what this is. Uh, NTDT means non-transfusion dependent thalassemia. So for most of us, thalassemia is a transfusion dependent disease. And thalassemia major are a group of patients that need to receive blood in order to survive. However, NTDT means a group of thalassemia that do not require uh, continuous or regular blood transfusion. However, they could survive without blood transfusion at all or with minimal blood transfusion. And this term encompasses several groups of thalassemia. The beta thalassemia intermedia, hemoglobin E disease, and hemoglobin H disease. How common is this? This entity is present worldwide. Due to migration now, you could find it everywhere. However, the places where you could find it more is Asia, Middle East, and the Mediterranean. What is the significance of iron overload in this entity? Most phys physicians and lay people will have a misconception that somebody will become iron overloaded only if he is transfused or she is transfused. But the item NTDT will show us that these patients are severely iron overload even if they are not transfused at all. So one would wonder how come somebody will become iron overloaded if they are not transfused. The main reason for becoming iron overload is through absorption of iron from their gut. So because they're severely anemic or they have a low hemoglobin, these patients will have a mechanism through which they will start absorbing iron from their gut. And this absorption of, absorption of iron is enough to make them iron overload and to cause a lot of morbidity and mortality for these patients. How do you monitor and manage iron overload in this population? This is a new thing. A lot of people didn't even know that iron overload exists in this group of untransfused uh, uh, patients. And uh, several studies have been done over the last few years trying to show that these patients, first of all, are iron overloaded and that we, one could use certain markers in order to monitor their iron overload and to see how they are iron overloaded. And we have recently published uh, studies showing that because they are iron overload, they might have a worse uh, life survivor and a better uh, and a uh, less, uh, uh, more side effects. So bec because they are iron overloaded, iron overload is associated in this uh, people with less survival, more mortality and more uh, morbidity. How to monitor them? Like most of iron overload, one would do a serum ferritin and a liver iron concentration. Serum ferritin is a blood test and liver iron concentration is a test that we do through an MRI. However, in this group of patients, different from those that are transfused, we have clearly shown that serum ferritin underestimates the amount of iron in this uh, patient. So serum ferritin correlates well with liver iron concentration. It's good for monitoring. However, for diagnosis of iron overload in this NTDT group, it is better to do a liver iron concentration through an MRI. Doctor, so how does all of this apply to the data you're presenting here at ASH 2011? What we're presenting here is uh, a large uh, uh, study on 166 NTDT patients whom are iron overloaded and uh, this study is randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled, multinational uh, study, which means that this is probably one of the ultimate studies of evidence-based medicine, since we are now in an era of evidence-based medicine. It's a registration study, so this is why we had a placebo, meaning that some patients were on five milligram, another were on placebo five, others were on 10 milligram, and the fourth group were on placebo uh, 10 milligram. To show few points, first of all, efficacy of this uh, drug in this group of patients compared to placebo, and what we care for more than efficacy even is the safety of this drug in this group of uh, uh, patients compared to uh, placebo. Can you talk about the results? The results are present in okay. the abstract. I mean, it clearly shows that uh, these uh, patients uh, responded very well to Deferazirox and uh, there has been a decrease in their liver iron concentration as well as uh, serum ferritin 
uh, the, the decrease was uh, significant and by far uh, better in the 10 milligram group than the 5 milligram group. And if you compare this to the placebo, the placebo increased their iron. However, the other group that received the drug decreased their iron about 10%, uh, about 10 times more than the increase in uh, iron. So how do you plan to build upon these findings? I mean, these findings are significant. It's a one-year uh, study. We're continuing the two-year uh, 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 study. Uh, it clearly shows that uh, there is uh, safety. I didn't tell you, but the data also was safe, and the uh, safety profile was similar in the placebo group to the uh, uh, treatment uh, group. The uh, safety profile was similar to any study done on Diferazirox uh, before. So it's an efficacious and a safe uh, drug. We'll continue to find the uh, look at the year two data, but I think it's worth for those patients who are iron overloaded despite being not transfused to receive this uh, uh, treatment. 10 milligram per kilogram per day seems to be the uh, ideal dose for these uh, patients to decrease uh, iron overload in this group of uh, patients. Good news for the patients, good news for you. Congratulations and, you. and best of luck going forward. Thank you, thank you very much. Dr. Ali Taher, professor of medicine from the American University of Beirut Medical Center.